What's up everybody, what's going on? This is Derek B, Independent Music Seminar. Today, um, we're gonna go live, do a live interview uh, with Cesar Ramirez of One World Magazine. And um, we're coming to pick him up. We're just gonna do it right here in my car. And um, we're gonna just hang out and talk about the music business. He has a um, background with, you know, media, magazines. And um, here he is, right here. So, um, as soon as he gets in, we're gonna have a kind of a brief discussion Make sure the door's open. <clears throat> there he is. The man of the hour. What's up, Derek B? What's going on, man? I'm glad uh, you can meet, meet up with me today. Oh, absolutely. I'm glad I did, too. So, um... I put a... F I originally put a post on Facebook asking if anyone wanted to debate music promotional ideas um and you only one who said yes <laughs> what? so um i don't know if our ideas are too far off from each other so i'm not sure if it'll be any debating but i i know it could be at least you know we could share some ideas right right on um different topics we both have been in this business for a long time you know, behind the scenes, at least for me, you know, I like to, I used to like to stay behind the scenes. And, right. um, and now I, and now I can't. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, for the people watching, why don't you give us a little background on you for the, those who, who have been, uh, sleeping under a rock for the last 10 plus years, oh. uh, on Bay Area hip hop, give them a little background. Um, well, I'm Caesar, also known as my writing and editing name as Mr. Caesar with a C E Z A, and then I've uh, been writing and editing uh, in the Bay Area as a journalist, writer, editor, and as a fan um, since about 1999, 2000, when uh, myself and Ron Hood from Underdog, uh, back then music. Uh, in Pittsburgh, started Explosive Magazine, and uh, that's what got me in the door. And uh, basically, ever since then, so ever since 1999, I've been uh, interviewing artists, and working with artists and labels, and building relationships uh, up until this point. Yeah, and then uh, recently, I guess last year, you started your own magazine, right? One right. World Magazine. Yes, I did. I did. I did. And I might as well. Hey, what's up? How you doing out there in uh, Nashville, right? Oh, yeah. One World Magazine right here. Um, started here in the Bay Area, but let's talk about the name. Yes. One World Magazine. What? How did that come about? Kind of like a brainstorm between me and my best friend uh, and a couple of other people in the room. And uh, he came up with the idea. He designed the logo. And... Uh, with all the Illuminati and New World Order crap going on, it was a kind of a good fit for what we're trying to do, which is actually just kind of be a leader amongst uh, lots of chitter chatter. You know right. what I mean? Because uh, media and hip hop is is a dime a dozen. I'll be honest. Now, credible media—that's what I'm trying to be. Right. What was the last credible hip hop magazine that you remember? Has there been one? You know, I believe they all start out very credible. All of them. And some have even ended very credible. It's those facts, yeah. you know what I mean? If you want me to name names, that's not too hard either. You know what I mean? Murder Dog. Murder Dog, absolutely. It's absolutely a good good example. Uh, Showcase was a great example. 4080. 4080. Um, others like Ozone were awesome. Um, you can go on and on. But 
uh, I could even spotlight those who exist today who are still continuing uh, putting artists in print, which was my goal in doing Explosive Magazine, which was simply to put artists in print that needed right. to be in print because other magazines weren't doing it. Well, what do you feel like, <clears throat> it's 2017, there's probably two generations now who have been okay without a street presence, you know, a magazine in hip hop, because they, they go and look at their phones and they can go to any website and get that immediate information. What, why do you think you're still, I mean, I'm doing it still, I'm still printing magazines, but why, do you, why are you still doing it? But that internet competition. Well, it kind of goes along with what we always lately been trying to preach myself and uh, another magazine here in the Bay Area called Knox Smith Magazine. Yeah, nice. Shawnee B. Smith. Um, we kind of have the philosophy where we kind of brought a lot of the promotion uh, and just spotlight of, of, of hip hop here in Pittsburgh 925 in the Bay Area back to print and even our promotion game we brought it back to the flyers and the posters and sniping the posters and passing out the flyers at venues and whatnot so it's just been a, a physical movement um, just to kind of piggyback the billions of people who digitally promote yeah so yeah. I believe that I mean everyone's on the internet or, or they say but people are still in the streets without no internet and um, I always say you know the, a, a real buzz a genuine buzz it begins in the streets right absolutely that's a fact or that's at least a, a buzz that you want to a, a, a long-lasting buzz not a, a temporary you know uh, I mean something that's gonna last long like for example you know Mozzie for example let's take him he He's got a stupid buzz in the streets, right? Yes. And not just the Bay Area. I mean, Kansas City, San Diego. He's all over the place. Seattle. Seattle. Um, but that, you know, he's not getting any radio play, anything like that. No. But he is in a lot of street magazines, and he's in a lot of people's playlists right now. Um, and that's a great example of, you know, a buzz, you know, starting in the streets. Hold on one second, guys, because we're at this drive-through. I need a drink. I get a large lemonade. You want a drink? No, thanks. No, that's it. Right on. So, if you guys watching us, if you got any questions for Caesar or myself, um, go ahead and and uh, give us a holler. What's up, uh, Malachi? I see you watching. Um, so another thing I wanted to kind of talk about is a lot of artists also have nine to five jobs, you know, yes. and, um, and the, a big question I always get is, you know, how do you balance your career and your home life? And I, I really don't have a lot of good answers for that. You know, I would say, you know, besides my, my wife now. I mean, all of my relationships probably were destroyed because of hip hop. <laughs> you know, it's funny you say that, Derek B, because uh, just to answer that phrase and question and scenario, I too sacrificed my marriage for hip hop. I, I too cannot say too many positive things for it because um, even my girlfriend was uh, curious and she joked around with me before I came as to how I was going to answer this question because she knows that it's a humongous sacrifice yeah that's doing it. this um so, sacrifice is a great word yes so with that being said it isn't positive I myself spend most of my time uh, dealing with One World Magazine so honestly it's tough I believe, and I hate to say this, because this goes all the way up to even Illuminati things. <laughs> it takes great sacrifice 
for great success. Right. So. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it. Absolutely. You know? and, and, but always remember this, and I'm looking at all of you independent artists right now. There are many, many, many forms of success yet to be shown to you. Why? Because you're about to do it. That's right. Um, also, we all have different definitions of success, right? Yes. Um, like for me, I, I just, you know, I like to be behind the scenes. So I never was wanting to be on camera up front, but I also, I just wanted to enjoy the benefits of what we were doing, you know? Yes. Um, I got on the road, you know, we, you know, we did all the hard work, but when it came time for the credit, I just stepped to the back because I just needed a drink. Huh? Large just drink. The drink. Yeah. Thank you. So, um, for me, success is just being able to provide for my family and, um, I've been lucky enough to not have to have a nine to five and check in every day. So, yeah, you are. What is you know what is your level of success? You know, I mean, not everyone wants to be. I mean, yeah, sure, you all want to be huge pop stars, but that's not all of you know the whole process. Money never made anyone happier. No. You know, people with money still got problems. I believe there's more money, more problems. Right. <laughs> Which also com complexes your life more. And I'm a simple guy. Honestly, success is rated by your happiness and health. Yeah. And, uh, and you can throw a couple of other H words, like honor. Mm -hmm. You know. I would say a big part of this business is integrity. If, you know... For us to be able to be in this business as long as we have, it's because we really haven't, you know, fucked anyone over. You know what I mean? It wasn't ours, you know, we definitely resolved these issues, but yes, um, integrity. You know, doing what's right even when no one's watching. You know, and uh, you can have a long career. As long as you've got good people to work with, good people to rely on. If you're good to these people, they'll be good to you back. I agree. But that's not always true, though. Well, you're right, because... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we always find that out the hard way, too. So, I guess another rule is don't always expect how you treat someone for them to treat you the same way. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's definitely and you'll just sad. You'll be mad at a lot of people. Yeah, because some of us give a whole lot. And uh, very rarely receive even a thank you or yeah. even a, 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 a Instagram or post or a Facebook. Something. You know what I mean? Any little. But we signal. don't do it for that. No, we don't. But it goes a long way, I'll tell you. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because something is always better than nothing, including in your own personal relationships with your family members, friends, and, and loved ones. You know, I'm sorry, or thank you, or right. even simply asking with politeness for something. Right, right. So. That's kind of an old school um, philosophy, but it shouldn't be, you know. Um, we, we're only able to stay in this business because of our relationships. And uh, people like us, because we don't do them bad. And um, that goes a long way for us. Um, so Malachi is asking, how could a magazine help an older artist? Well, it just depends on the situation of the older artist. If the older artist is still very active, is, is this older artist struggling to maintain stature? Is this older artist struggling to get on stage, to get paid to go on stage? Is this older artist... Uh, set in his ways to where he won't do something new. All these things matter because if you've been doing it for many years, change is inevitable. Yeah, you have to. 
I, I made a post earlier this year, like, I, I think I said something like, you know, 80 or 90 percent of you with your New Year's resolutions, you're going to do the exact same stuff you did last that didn't work for you last year, this year, and you repeat the same mistakes. You got to change. Um, you can call it change. You can call it evolution. As long as you're making the process better, you know, but if you're just relying on that same formula, it didn't work for you last year. Don't do it. If you're having a hard time changing mentally, that's where where the change has to happen. There's a book, it's a short book. You could even go on YouTube. It's called Who Moved My Cheese? I don't know if you've heard of this book. Mm -mm. It's really short. Um, Who Moved My Cheese? Go on YouTube, look it up. There's an All audio. Right. And um, All right. it's, it's basically these two mice, they're in a maze. No way. And they're looking for cheese. You know, it's always been in the same place. And one day, somebody moved it. Oh, shit. And so, it's a, it's an awesome story, but you'll just understand how important change is once you understand how important it is. You know? Right, right. Um, let's see. Any other questions here? So, uh, what else could we talk about? Um, I made a post about this also, and I know you, you um, I'm gonna talk about it because we're both magazine guys. If you wanna just tell people a quick little history on, not a history, but a lesson on how to send files to magazines, you know, and my idea was basically like, don't send pictures so there's a big difference. Is that, do you have anything to add to sending, you know, pictures and graphics to to you as a magazine that will be printed? Well, I mean, it has to be high resolution for one. And high resolution means what? Uh, 300 DPI. 300 DPI. So if you guys are in Photoshop by yourself, you go to the settings in the resolution. Yes. But you have to start there. If you have a picture that's already small and you bring it into Photoshop, you can't just make it 300 DPI if no. it's 72. It'll just make your picture look really bad. It'll it'll stretch it. So um, my advice was when you're getting pictures or your graphics back from your photographer or your graphic designer, have them give you one folder with your high res files your 300 dpi yes. those files usually are like five megabytes or six megabytes a piece depending but if they're smaller than one megabyte they're probably not high res Same yes with your we all learn this the hard way even myself because with this 84 page magazine we can you imagine how many photos i have in my email to put it together and so I find out last minute, as we all do, editing our magazines from the printer, which photos on which page are low resolution and that they recommend you change them. Yeah. So you we find out very late in the game, and then we have to make the decision what we're going to run as is or not. So there's my 15 cents on that. <laughs> and so always, anybody who's going to do anything in print, whether you're printing up your own flyer, you're running a full page ad in a magazine, anything. Make sure you have professional design your graphics. At least check them for you. At least check them. If, if on that note, at least have another set of eyes check your work, your product for typos uh, and even for maybe something you missed. Yeah. So, you know, it's just dotting your I's and crossing your T's. Those are the things that could separate uh, yourself from the rest. So, you know, images, everything's an independent world, independent rap world. This is one world. One world. So, you know, I suggest everybody just, everybody will play their position. I'm going to play my position. Derek B's going to play his position. And so go reach out to the professionals to get the job done. Right.
How could people get a hold of you or get in your magazine? Simple. You just can get a hold of me on any social media, whether it's Facebook at One World Magazine, Instagram at One World Magazine, the number one, or even Twitter, um, Mr. with a A H, Caesar, or at One World Magazine on Twitter. Um, or you can just call me, 925 594 0251. My number hasn't changed in 10, 15 years. So <laughs> most people, you know, have my number still. You can just call me and we could talk about it. It's real easy to get in, even though the next issue for April is just about booked out. All I have are paid slots, unfortunately, but uh, my paid slots are more than worth what I'm charging. And you'd be amazed what I'm charging, what I would give you for what I charge, and what I'm what I do with my magazine for what you get for your money. So, get at him. Uh, when he says paid slots, that that just means you can get in this magazine. It's there's a, there's a fee involved. This isn't like you know you're just paying to get in, but this is just to cover the cost of printing. This is not. Um, Profit. It's not definitely <laughs> not for profit. We make no profit doing what we do. No. It takes years for an independent magazine, at least years and or handful of issues released before we make profit. And then the circumstances all are different. You know, we all have different. You know, in the case of uh, Showcase Magazine, it did start from nothing, and there was a handful of us helping out on that project but a year or so after the magazine got started uh, I was able to get a job at Bayside Distribution where I was the marketing director so guess what I could pay for the magazine now you know and I was able to help support that magazine for years after because of all the ads we ran but that wasn't you know that wasn't the case in every magazine and and I actually have my own magazines that I didn't do that with. So there's, you know, there's all kinds of different things going on. But definitely support these local magazines. Um, it, you know, like I said, it's not for profit. But it is great promotion for you guys. You know, it's better than, for me. I like magazines better than flyers because people look at the flyer and then five minutes later, they'll throw it away. But a magazine, even if, you know... You'll see this magazine on people's desks in their rooms, you know, years later. I've seen a few of my old magazines that made it into different interviews or music videos. Mm -hmm. Just It just happens to be on a table. Yep. Someone's rolling their weed on my magazine because it's just there. It's part of that studio now. But a flyer, it, it doesn't have a shelf life of, man, nothing. These magazines, they stick around for a while. They cost a little bit more money, but you're getting way more bang for your buck, you know? I totally agree with that. And it's, just to back you up on exactly what you were talking about, Derek B., are these. A quarter page ad put in a, in a magazine. Um, I put out 4,000 copies of this, so your quarter page ad is basically like a flyer. Same and I'm charging 150, so it's basically the same price as their flyer. And I'm gonna promote these. I'm gonna pass them out. You don't have to do anything. Nothing. So it's just a paid service is what you're paying for. You're not paying Caesar or Derek B. so he can go out to dinner tonight and, and take his lady out. No, you're not paying <laughs> us for that. You're paying us to produce the product, which is about you. And so when we talk about who's hot who's this or who's that we just say turn the page blah 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 right that's why it's worth being in a magazine because this makes you credible all your moves you've been making in your career this just validates them right so so also people might not know it's like 150 bucks for I don't know how many flyers 5,000 flyers yep. maybe and then you still got to get him out there. He's going to pass him out there for about the same price. But it's 5,000 flyers is what you're getting. So the ratio on magazines is that per every single magazine, seven different people will read it. So if he's printing 4,000 copies, then it's, you know, around over 20,000 viewers, you know, per issue. So you're getting more eyes, definitely getting more eyes on it. 
and um, it's it's part of you know it's part of the game. At least for us, we grew up with the magazines: Forty Eighty, Murder Dog, Showcase. Um, this was our internet, you know, but it still exists, you know, because let's be honest, there's a lot of people who are doing bad right now and they don't got internet, you know, they don't got a smartphone. And so this is it. This is their Bible. One World Magazine in the streets. It's free. If, if you, it, well, it's not free. Sometimes it's free if you catch up with him and he'll shoot it to you. But if we don't cover the costs with advertising then we have to sell some copies so that we don't lose money um we try to make them free because you know it's part of it's part of what we want we want promotion um what else is going on well, um, let me double let me let me say which more to what you're saying yeah yes one world magazine is directly for retail sale but like what derek b has just stated it, I will attest to I give away more copies for free than I've sold and that's just like a teeter-totter only for now until I catch momentum and I will then be selling more than I'll be giving away it's kind of like music so absolutely no difference that's what I equate what I'm doing to a lot of people's hustle I'm no different than, than an independent rapper uh, brand new I have two issues out so I put I've dropped two albums that's how it is and I'm building my network building my retail game, my distribution game, you know, and even my own promotion game. Right. It's the same thing. But instead, my product is you. And I say you for those of you in here. Whether your name is simply mentioned, I reviewed your album, we featured you, or you paid to get in. It's about you, those who are in it. Um... Real quick, I want to also really quickly talk about San Diego. We both kind of have a good good relationship. and We've got a lot of friends out there in the business in San Diego. What, um, you know, what brought you to San Diego the first time as a hip-hop fan or as a magazine writer? Well, that was easy because... I was actually born in San Diego, and so I always I have family that lives there still. Okay. So it was always an excuse for me to go visit them, and ever since I did that, I just I was working for Explosive Magazine. I thought, well, sh we should expand and, and put some of these San Diego artists in in our magazine, and uh, you know do what I do for the Bay, but do it for San Diego. Yeah. So I've been doing that since like oh one oh two oh three when the first time I put. San Diego in print. Mm -hmm. Shout out the icons. Shout out Mitchie Slick. Shout out Hound Foundation, Damu, Black Mikey, Little B Stone, cats like that. Cats like Cricket, I Rock. You know the originals. Cats that you know still today are still hustling, right. and you're gonna see them in the next One World magazine. So pay awesome. attention. Awesome. All right. Well, uh, Caesar, right on for um, taking the time out and oh, giving us give this one interview. More shout out, though. Yeah, go ahead. Because before you turn this off, and I see you watching Willie Ways, uh, the next star, uh, the, I'm going to call him a star because he's actually coming out here to the Bay, Willie Ways from Virginia. Check him out. He's on the back page. He's got an interview in here. Read about him. Willie Ways, he's coming to the Bay. Right on. March 1st through March 8th. Y'all need to get, man, just catch a bar on him. <laughs> I just I can't say anything about him. Willie Ways is coming. <clears throat> Look this out morning. for Ways. Look him up online. Yes, Willie Ways. He's right here in the. Um, he's, he's watching us right now. Willie Ways, shout out to you. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm gonna turn the live stream off, but I'm gonna I'm gonna sit back and we're gonna do another interview, kind of a private one for um, my YouTube channel. But um, everybody, uh, thanks for watching and um, subscribe to his page. Subscribe to my page, um, and we'll see you guys later. Love you, Glow.